My father comes from the Caucasus Mountains in Russia. He was a Sunni Muslim. To this day, I still remember him singing his prayers. I remember him repeating his prayers. I remember as a young boy, four or five years old, going to the mosque. I remember when we did go to the mosque, I used to mimic my father and my grandfather in their prayers. When they got up, I got up. When they bowed down, I bowed down. On the holidays, on Eid and on Ramadan, our family used to celebrate them. A lot of food was made, relatives would come over. I remember asking my father why we had to sacrifice a sheep. And he would tell me it was a substitute for um, Abraham's son and that God required us to do that. There was never really a fear of God. There was also, there was always a, a respect for God. And uh, that's the way we were raised. I started seeing things um, the first time in a different light when I had a friend of mine that actually became a born again Christian. I saw his lifestyle before he received Christ as a savior and after he received Christ as a savior and it was a big difference. And I, and I remember I walked up to him and I said, uh, hey, what's going on in your life? Why are you, aren't you doing the things you used to do? And he told me that he received Christ, but he didn't know too much about the scriptures or about uh, his faith that much, but I definitely saw there was a difference. Now, I was raised in a town where there was sometimes racial tension between whites and, and blacks. And I went to this Bible study and it was predominantly all black. And I remember going in there and I was a little um, intimidated. But I remember this black man came up to me and he told me that he loved me and he hugged me. That never happened to me before. I never had any man tell me that he loved me or give me a hug. I sat down and that's the first time I've ever heard the gospel or the gospel preached to me clear, clearly about who and what Jesus is and what he did. I sat down on the couch and a Bible was given to me. And they said, open up to Genesis. I was like, what is Genesis? I have no clue what Genesis is. And I remember this beautiful sister saw that I was struggling and she sat down next to me and she opened up her Bible and she showed me the scriptures of Genesis. And they were talking about Adam and Eve and how the first sacrifice in the Bible is when Adam and Eve committed a sin and God killed an animal and covered their nakedness with skins of, of that animal. Anyway, the point of the message was that God needed a sacrifice for our sins. The thought of a sacrifice just sparked my interest and what really interests me the most was when I was there was I never saw true love before I mean these people really truly loved God and not only outwardly but by their actions and what they did and that intrigued me I've never saw anybody go into really bad neighborhoods and try to help people and Again, they didn't only say it with their mouth, but they did it in their actions. And that, to me, was the biggest testimony. My second visit, I started to want to learn more about the Bible, where it came from, who wrote it, uh, who was Jesus, how did he live his life, what were the apostles. Um, my, my interest was really sparked. These are things I never knew before. This is the first time I heard that God was love. My conception of God before that is that God was a wrathful God. And if I did anything wrong, he's going to send me to hell. I never knew that he was a God of forgiveness. I never knew that he was a God that loved me so much that he took my place on the cross and bore my sins. And because of him, I could have eternal life. Again, this was too good to believe. And I, and I wanted to believe it, but it was too good to believe. And I felt that I had to do something to earn my salvation. But then I kept coming back to these Bible studies to learn more, to understand more. Maybe I went about five or six times ready. I remember being challenged. And I remember a brother coming up to me and he looked at me right in the eye and he said, are you ready to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior tonight? I was scared. And I heard a lot about Jesus up until that point, but I wasn't ready to commit my life to him. And I had to make that decision. I, I, I couldn't walk the fence anymore. And it was a scary decision. And I felt that if I do make this decision, I'm going to be rejected. I'm going to compromise friendships. I'm going to compromise my, my uh, love for my family. Because I felt that I was abandoning my father and my grandfather. And I, you know, in my culture, you don't do that. You, you love your parents. And, and you do whatever you can for them. You take care of them when they're older. You do everything 
the right way. But I, I had to make a decision. Am I going to honor my mother or my father to the point where I'm going to reject God's gift? But then I heard the pastor at the end of the Bible study give an invitation. And I said to myself, if I reject his message, I'm rejecting Jesus. I'm rejecting God. When I saw the testimonies of the people, how they conducted themselves, how they lived their lives, what the scripture said, and applying it, that ultimately made my decision that God is who he says he is. These people are genuine. And either they're telling me the truth or they're lying. It's got to be one or the other. And I believe they were telling me the truth. And I was so convicted that I cried because I understood the magnitude of who Jesus is. God revealed himself to me in the scriptures and I received him into my heart. He said, Lord, come into my life. You are who you say you are. And I made the ultimate decision that night. After I received Christ as my savior, my whole viewpoint changed. It used to be selfishness, how I could get ahead in life. How can I make the most money in life? You know, I had a lot of uh, future uh, goals I wanted to achieve. But now after I received Christ as my savior, those things weren't as important. Not that I neglect my duties as a, as a, a husband or a father or as a son or a brother or a friend, but my outlook on it completely changed. Now when I do things, I want to do them unto the Lord, not in my own strength or capacity, but through His strength, through His capacity. And there has been many challenges in my life. You know, again, in my culture, we love our parents, we love our fathers or our grandfathers, our mothers, and we do everything we can for them. But um, when you do believe in Christ, especially coming from the background that I come from, you, I did face re rejection, and it's very hurtful. But I'm still there for my family, even though I was re rejected. And ultimately, ultimately, my family took me back, and they, and they received me. So that was the hardest part, is becoming a Christian and having rejection from your family and friends. So, but ultimately, God can give you peace with that too. How I communicate with um, people that are from the Muslim faith and have that background, first of all, they're good, godly people. They really have a deep respect for the Lord. They're good people. They'll give you anything off their, uh, that they have. They'll share with you a piece of bread, the shirt off their back. I mean, I love Muslim people, and there's no two ways about that but my biggest prayer and my sincere um, advice or whatever way you want to term it is that who is Messiah who is Isa look into the scriptures is he who he says he is is he a person that's just a prophet was it someone that took his place on that cross or did Isa actually die on the cross if he actually died on the cross then he is the Redeemer, the Savior, the Anointed One. That would be my question to ask. Is Jesus who he says he is? Is he the Jesus of the Bible or is he just a prophet? I believe he's much more than just a man. I believe that he is the Anointed One, the prophesized one, the one that, that was spoken about since the beginning of time that was to come and to redeem the world. I believe he is going to come back again and he will set up his, his, his kingdom and I believe that through him we have eternal life. I would consider Jesus as my savior because all have fallen short. I knew that if I was to die tomorrow before I received Christ as my savior and God sent me to hell, I deserved it. I wasn't going to argue with God. I knew I deserved hell. I knew I, I was never good enough and God is a holy God. If anybody ever saw God, they would die. I understand that. That's why we need a savior. We need one who is perfect. We need one who is that perfect sacrifice. And when I understood that Jesus Christ was that perfect sacrifice and that he willingly gave his life, that changed me. And that made me see things in a perspective I've never seen before. I think the world needs to know who Jesus is and truly consider it. Truly consider his death, his resurrection, that he defeated sin, death, and the devil on that cross. When you have that, and you fully comprehend that, it's a freedom that surpasses all understanding. I remember for 20 years praying for my father and my grandfather 
I love them both dearly, and I would do anything for them. My father ultimately did pass away, but before he passed away, they had him on feeding tubes, they had him on respirators, they had him hooked up to a bed, and the only thing that was keeping him alive was machines. I remember when they pulled the plug, so to speak, that my father was going to pass away now, and um, they gave him a couple minutes to live because he couldn't breathe on his own. I remember looking at him and I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, for 20 years I've been praying for this man. For 20 years I've been asking you to reveal truth, or if you really are who you say you are, to reveal truth to my father. I love him deeply, Lord. And they're going to pull the plug on him. And they did pull the plug. And I couldn't stand there and watch my father die. So I ran downstairs to the, they had a chapel and a hospital. And I remember getting on my knees and looking up to the Lord and saying, Lord, for 20 years I've been praying for this man. If you are real and you are who you say you are don't let my father slip into eternity without knowing you as his Lord and Savior as his Messiah my sister-in-law comes running down into the chapel and gets me she says Roland your father is breathing on his own he came out of his coma and whether it's politically correct or not I didn't care I remember a joy came over me I grabbed the scriptures I had a Bible in my hand and I ran up to my father and I said shared the gospel with him about Christ and who he is and what he did on the cross and I said Pop do you believe what I'm telling you and he said yes I believe and approximately a month later my father passed away but the joy that came that knowing that God is faithful is overwhelming <laughs>